Hey guys, what's going on? It's the Dream It Alive show. I'm your host, Ash Kumra, co-founder of DreamItAlive.com. DreamItAlive.com is a global community that's guiding you to create your dream life with scientifically proven visualization tools, dream boards, and helpful personal development content. So take that next step. Become the best version of yourself at DreamItAlive.com. So... One thing that I will give as a prediction for right now and beyond is that we're really entering something called a creative economy. Creative economy has been used by many authors and very successful people and theorists and spiritual experts. But for me, I feel that the creative economy is really leveraging that creative power that's within you and doing things that come from the heart, things that are truly authentic, living for a purpose or working on a purpose, not just following a trend. A great example is, let's say you wanted to create a social network. Let's say you said, hey, I want to create a social network that's targeting women entrepreneurs. And if someone asks you, well, why do you want to do that? You're like, well, it's because the women market is very lucrative. They spend a lot of money. Women entrepreneurship is a burgeoning group that's really on the rise right now. And uh, I feel that advertisers love it. Now, those are all trend-based comments. If someone asked you and you're living with purpose on that idea, why do you want to create a women entrepreneur social network? You're like, look, I've worked in the women entrepreneurship scene or I'm a woman entrepreneur myself or you know, I've been guided on awesome business ventures with women entrepreneurs and I feel like they don't have a home base to collaborate, collaborate and share what they're doing and I really want to help this group rise to the top and take them to the next level. That's living with passion. And using your what I call creative powers. I feel that uh, Amanda Aitken is someone who really represents this power of what I call creative courage and using, you know, what is your intuition to guide you to create that dream opportunity or dream thing. And I'm really excited to just dive into a conversation with her about this and just get her perspective on how you can really use that inner force, that inner channel, that inner power to create something that's meaningful for the world. Uh, She is a rock star. I mean, for those who have seen the bio already, I mean, pardon me when I announce her awesome uh, bio, but she's a magic activator, award-winning entrepreneur. She's creator of some amazing girl guide courses, including the girl's guide to web design, graphic design, and the guide to the creative bloom, which I actually picked up the creative bloom. And I have to say, it's a pretty impressive Uh, project. And Forbes has actually listed her as one of the top 20 young female founders to follow on Twitter. Um, You know, she's just, she has this amazing mastermind for spiritual women entrepreneurs and her site, amandaaken.com has a lot more information also. So Amanda, how are you doing today? I'm great, Ash. It is really magical to be here. Thank you for having me. It is our honor. It is our honor. So Amanda, I'm curious How the heck did you become this magic activator? What is your life journey about? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's been uh, been quite the journey. I started off um, working in the corporate world, so I came out of that world, and I always had this entrepreneurial spark as well as a love for all things magical, as I call it. And the two just kind of ended up building to a point where I realized, you know, I don't think I'm cut out to work for somebody else. I had all these creative ideas. I was already, I taught myself to do web design when I was a teenager, so I was already working with freelance clients and that kind of thing. And after a few years working as a copywriter and in marketing in the corporate world, I was able to manifest getting laid off from my job, which was wonderful. And uh, I ended up just starting off down this incredible road. And uh, it just has kind of grown and blossomed and taken lots of different twists and turns. Uh, Went from having a freelance business type of thing to creating the Girls Guide courses because I realized I wanted to empower women to do their own websites, do their own graphics, create their own beautiful visual brands. And at the same time, I started to have a very uh, exhilarating psychic awakening. And it was during that process that I realized, okay, I really need to be bringing this into my work as well. So, yeah, it it just has been a wild ride. And it's I liked what you were talking about earlier about creative courage. I totally agree. It's all about having the courage to, to know what is that 
special creative spark that is meant for you and only you and that wants to come through you and then letting it letting it run wild really okay well tell me about a time when you manifested uh creative courage um because one thing i've learned is that we all in life have either overcome what society calls a failure or we had some you know awakened moment or something that just made you realize i have to make that shift uh, me personally um prior to dreamlight.com you know, you talk about doing things for passion, not for trend. I was doing entrepreneurship stuff, really focused on trends. You know, oh, the market size is big. Maybe I can get acquired. And I did well. I did okay. I'm not going to, you know, nothing like crazy happened that way. But it was at that moment when I realized my life, there's something bigger needs to happen. Something more meaningful with my talents has to happen. And uh, I kind of did some meditations and I connected with like-minded energy and I was blessed to have been given this opportunity from the divine when Anita and Aaron, my two co-founders, presented dreamalive.com to me. So I'm just sharing an example. Like what, where, tell us about your creative, uh, you know, courage moment and, you know, what that meant for you. Mm, Yeah, okay. I do have an example of that, actually. This is a fun one. I was, this is probably two years ago or so, I was at that point, hadn't really fully stepped into the spiritual aspect of my business. I was still in the early phases of my um, awakening, if we want to call it that. And I was sort of trying to figure out, okay, where do all these pieces land and, you know, what does this all mean for me? And I was doing, uh, the, at the time I had the Girl's Guide to Web Design, which was my main focus. And I actually got it into my head that I wanted to go to uh, Necker Island, Richard Branson's private island. I'd never really heard of it before. It just popped up on my radar one day. And I, I looked at the website that was talking about it. And I was like, I think I'm going to go there someday. And I didn't even give it another thought. And it was literally, to talk about the power of intention, manifestation, whatever you want to call it, it was literally two weeks later that I got totally out of the blue an email from someone inviting me to go. And I was sitting there and I'm just like, this is crazy. Like, what is what is going on here? This is, I mean, amazing. Is this even, is, is even real? Is this a joke? And it wasn't a joke. And I ended up going and that was absolutely incredible, obviously. But um, to tie into that, something else, that has to do with creative courage is that I had to, before I went, decide what I wanted to uh, sort of be known as, like just for the Rolodex purposes of all the guests who are going to be there. Like, what was my title going to be? And I was feeling this shift happening in my business, in my life, and I, I really felt called to claim the title that my different teachers that I've been working with told me actually applied to me, which is, well, Amanda, you're a psychic medium, like just you can just start telling people that, you know, but I felt very sort of self-conscious about it and I was still unsure and it was, it was really in this whole unfolding phase for me, but I made the decision to put that as my title for the Rolodex of people who were going to be on Necker Island. And just by doing that, just by making that commitment and putting myself out there under, you know, this new title that really summed up this fresh direction I was going in and, and really what was authentically happening in my life that was such an important seed for me to plant, and I didn't know it at the time, but as it turned out, I ended up having certain conversations with people on Necker Island that have led to just other magical things happening. And if I hadn't gone ahead and had actually stated, you know, that this is the title that I'm using for myself now, and this is an actual representation of, of who I am now, what I am becoming, that sort of thing wouldn't have happened. You know, I wouldn't have found myself in a boat having a half hour long conversation with Jean Oling, who's the CEO of Virgin Unite, explaining to her about my experiences with the unseen world, with the psychic world, with all that sort of stuff. And we got to have a fantastic conversation. And now, you know, I have a relationship with someone who I would never in my wildest dreams have, have uh, you know, guessed that I would have ever met. And that has planted the seeds for my my latest thing that I'm working on, which is really a campaign for the awareness of awareness about the unseen world and how I think that's so important for all of us in our lives and our businesses and how we can create incredible results if we work in partnership with the unseen world. So you never know, you know, where things are going to lead you and you do have to take those creatively courageous leaps, whether it's 
giving yourself a certain title, even if it feels a bit uncomfortable, or just making a decision to to go for something that feels like a big stretch or whatever it may be, it, it's all so, so worth it. Okay, well, why don't you pretend this is a uh, Unseen World for Dummies seminar. What is the Unseen World, and how do you tap into this uh, power? <laughs> yeah, so the Unseen World, I'm just completely fascinated by it. So what do I mean by the Unseen World? Well, there are different aspects to it, but basically what we're talking about is anything that is beyond the physical. So, excuse me, so metaphysical, basically. And when it comes to the unseen world, the main ways that I think people can really benefit from from working with it are, number one, to understand the laws of the universe. So some people say there are seven laws of the universe. Some people say there are 12. Some of them are more minor. Some of them are, you know, more important. But if you understand the laws of the universe, which are basically invisible laws, but they're working in the background at all times and that govern everything that happens to us in our lives, then that is an incredible point of power. So the laws of the universe is a major one. Of course, the unseen world also comprises things like subatomic particles, you know, and like our cells, things like that that can be seen, but only if you have incredible, you know, devices and that sort of thing. And then there's also the aspect of the unseen world that really is the the spirit world, I guess I would say. So this is the aspect that it actually includes not only energies, but actually other beings. And in my work as a medium, I have been continually blown away just by the fact that there is a spirit world. I mean, it's just, it's so unbelievable and so magical. And the fact that we can interface with it and have these incredible healing experiences and and just be able to understand our place in the universe, that to me is so important. So the unseen world, those are, I would say, are the three major components, and they each have their own inherent power and inherent benefit to uh, learning to work with them. Okay, so this is really important. Um, I am, I know what you're talking about because of the work that I do and the amazing mentors and advisors and guides that I have in my own life, but there are people who will be here in this interview who might be fascinated by what you're saying. And they might not necessarily know how to tap into this power. So if you could kind of guide us on how do you tap into this um, inner spiritual power, these, you know, this new energy, new process, how, do, how, what are the things you can do? And I want some tactical things like, you know, certain meditations or visualizations or foods, whatever you feel, but some more t- just like a to-do list kind of. <laughs> okay. A to-do list for connecting with the unseen world. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So I would say that the the first and probably most important element is just being aware that it exists. So, you know, we've kind of tackled that because these are not things that are talked about, you know, in the everyday world very often. It's kind of like it's t- t- we take it for granted that what we see is what we get. So if you can't see something, then generally we don't believe it to be real. But it's, it's interesting because when you think about Uh, different scientific breakthroughs. I mean, you know, originally we thought the atom was the smallest particle and then our, our, um, you know, tools for measurement and that sort of thing catch up and they improve and we're suddenly able to see, oh, wait, there's something smaller, there's something more beyond that. So I would say the first step is just to uh, have an open mind and kind of educate yourself a little bit about what there might be going on behind the scenes, so to speak. So if you're willing to acknowledge that the unseen world exists, that's the first step. The second step, I would say, is to get rid of any fear you may have surrounding that stuff. Because a lot of us have been somewhat indoctrinated. Um, Sometimes it's not like a conscious thing that's happened, but it could just sort of be something that gets passed on. You're not even consciously aware of it. Other times it's religious beliefs and that sort of thing, sometimes there are certain, uh, I don't know, energies or constructs that some of us have been taught to believe it is wrong to associate with, that they're they're bad or they're evil or something like that. So that's everyone's own personal journey, you know, to go on if if they choose to want to work with the unseen world. But I can tell you from my experience, you know, there's no such thing as anything evil. Evil is not a force that exists in the world. There's only 
different sorts of variations on love and light or whatever you want to call it. So there's really nothing to be afraid of. And in fact, um, it's a very natural thing to work with the unseen world. And I would say that the third step is to just learn to connect to your intuition because your intuition is really your gateway to the unseen world. And we all are naturally intuitive. It's just that various people have different degrees of kind of like blockages or just sort of layers of gunk that they've built up that has caused them to not be able to readily access their intuition. I mean, the intu- your intuition gets through to you anyway. You probably just don't even realize it, but there are certain things you can do to open up to your intuition. And the first one just being a having the intention to, you know, be more connected with your intuition, be more open to guidance that you may get. Because for those of you who aren't aware, the way that it works basically in the spirit world is that we all have a team of spirit guides. And I know this might sound kind of fantastical or too good to be true or just kind of crazy if you haven't heard about this before, but literally every person has a team, like an upstairs team, if you want to call it, of people or entities or, you know, light beings who are guiding you on your path. And when you open up to communicating with them, when you open up your intuition, that is then allowing yourself to step into creative partnership with your spirit posse that you've got up there who's here to help you on your journey. And so, again, knowing that they're there, being open to the idea that you might have this support team, which is pretty darn cool if you ask me, that is a really great first step to take. And then in terms of actually opening up your intuition, you really just need to kind of start uh, listening. And a great doorway into that is to pay attention to things like, Um, gut feelings, first of all. So if you get a really sort of negative feeling about a particular opportunity or a particular person or if something feels like a really big yes to you, that's definitely paying attention to your gut feelings. And then there's also just acting on inspiration because one of the biggest ways that your spirit guides communicate with you is that they will provide you with ideas that really light you up and excite you. So if you get one of those moments, you know, in the shower or you're on a walk or whatever you're doing where it's this blinding flash of inspiration for an idea that just fills you with incredible excitement to use in your life or your business or whatever the case, that is a communication, you know, that's coming in via your intuition. And if you act on it, that is like giving your upstairs team this big thumbs up, and then it'll start flowing more naturally to you. So you'll start getting more and more guidance coming through. So it's like a muscle. You need to kind of uh, be open to it. You need to learn to work with it. You need to practice just being open to it and working with it. And it'll start flowing more and more, and you're in, you'll find your intuition will expand uh, exponentially, really. I love that. No, I mean, what you're saying is such – such awesome knowledge here. And, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to dive a little further that's related to, because you talked about intuition and you talked about that, you know, accepting the, you know, the things that are from your heart or your gut or, you know, your inner tuition, whatever you want to call it. Um, one of the things I feel is that helps you once you have that feeling of making a change or doing something impactful, then I feel the next two steps are visualizing it, and then putting it down on a dream board. I'd like to talk to you about the first mm-hmm. part, which is the visualization part. Um, what sure. role do you feel visualization has for people to achieve their dreams and goals? Yeah, visualization is huge. And when I say huge, I think this is a misconception that a lot of people have when it comes to visualization. Like, we feel that we. We know it's important, you know, you hear people talk about it, but we don't really know how to go about doing it. And there's this this conception that it needs to be this really intense, effortful process, you know, where you're sitting there like in a meditation posture and every muscle in your body is all tense and your hands are all screwed up and your face is all screwed up and you're, you know, you're like really forcing okay, I'm going to picture this, I'm going to picture this, I'm going to do this really hard. (laughs) And I just think that it's important for people to know that that doesn't have to be the way to do it. In fact, that's actually detrimental to the process. But visualization is incredibly powerful, and it's most powerful when it's done in the spirit of fun and ease. And it's really just about, it's about nothing more than, than a daydream. So this is the way I like to do it, is I just like to take, 
time out every day. And you don't need very much time either. They say actually that all you need is 68 seconds of having a pleasant, you know, daydream and visualizing yourself in the, whatever situation it is that you're wanting to attract into your life. And that in the space of that 68 seconds, it's like this magical combustion happens and you start attracting more and more thoughts to you and the actual visualization process becomes even more easy and even more fun and even more powerful. So, Yes, visualization, definitely important, good thing to do sometimes just before bed. Sometimes that's a great time to do it. But you don't need to worry that you're doing it wrong. Like, let it be fun. Let it be easy. Let it be like a fantasy or a daydream. And it's fun, right, to think about the things that you want. So look at it as just rather than this difficult assignment or, or a should or a must do, look at it at just like a fun two minutes in your day that you just make a point of doing whenever it's convenient to you. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about the last part of that part, and then we'll dive into some more questions about, you know, how do you succeed with some of the things we just mentioned. Um, what role does uh, dream boards, commonly known as vision boards, play? Once you have that intuition that you need to make a change, then you visualize what you want to do. Now you're putting it down on, you know, something like a dream board. What, what are, what's your experience with dream boards and why are they important? Yeah, so dream, I actually kind of have a slightly different take on dream boards than your yeah. average dream board, I, I guess. Like, I, I think the process is very, it's very important, it's very powerful for sure. What I tend to do is rather than creating a single dream board that has a bunch of images on it, mm -hmm. I will look at, I'll kind of look at my whole office is what I tend to do as this space where I can start collecting items that remind me of what it is that I want to attract into my life. So it's kind of like the whole room becomes a dream board in little separate pieces, if that makes sense. Like, so for example, I have a uh, obsession with Hawaii. I want to live in Hawaii someday. So I went out, actually I didn't go out, my sister gave it to me. She gave me a Hawaii calendar, so I've got that on one wall. Then I have my little, like on this shelf to the left of my desk, I have specific um, little bits and pieces that remind me of wealth and abundance. Like, for example, I have this little bottle filled with uh, gold flakes that I picked up when I was in Sedona a few weeks ago, things like that. So I actually, I mean, you can turn it into a really creative project that way where you just get to collect things on your journey, knowing that you're going to bring them back to your office, which is your creative space. Or if you don't have an office, you know, your corner with your desk, whatever you may have available to you. Um, so that's my kind of way of vision boarding. That and also I'll change with my uh, desktop background, like my screensaver on my computer, I'll do that. Um, passwords, I'll, I'll change my passwords to things that I want to attract into my life. So whatever I use to log into different uh, different websites and things like that. So I kind of, I guess I never thought about it this way, but I guess I kind of treat my kind of life slash living space as one giant vision board. <laughs> You're like a walking vision board. I love it. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, I, oh, I gotta process that for a second. You're like a walking, talking vision board. Like every every conversation, you're like even putting on your vision board. Hey, I'm gonna have a meaningful talk with Ash today. That's cool. <laughs> I hope. I guess so. <laughs> well, I, I, I wanted to uh, dive a little further into um, this creative power, and uh, I and you put this in your video actually on your YouTube channel that, um, you know, the Picasso comment about, you know, how ch children are born with that creative power and, and ingenuity. And then sometimes as adults, it could, sometimes as adults, it passes away. I mean, you quoted that Picasso quote. What do you mean yes. that that creative power is sometimes lost? And how do you get that as an adult? Yeah, okay. So I would say, well, first of all, it's never entirely lost, so that's the good news. It's okay, just good. that it gets kind of covered over. It's the same as that analogy I gave earlier. It's sort of covered up by all this gunk. And in the case of our creative power, a lot of it is – a lot of that gunk comes from – uh, experiences that we've had where people have put our, down our work or told us, you know, we're not good enough and things like that. And a lot of times that's things that happen in school. So, I mean, I have my whole set of issues that I could talk about with the school system, but I do think that 
school have the tendency, rather than building us up to be the powerful creators that we naturally are, it has a tendency to sort of dumb us down and, and put us into, you know, certain categories and put labels on us and on all that sort of thing, none of which is very, uh, well, and none of which is very helpful when you are wanting to uh, be a creative human being making your own uh, unique imprint on the world. So by the time you're out on your own, you know, maybe you have the entrepreneurial spirit or you just have a certain, you have a tendency to want to start these really cool projects, it can be kind of hard to get out from underneath that. And I think it's so important that we do the inner work required to allow our powerful creators to come out to play again, because that really is our birthright. Like we are here to create, we are here to each make our unique contribution and we do that through creating, not necessarily through, you know, you don't have to be an artist or something like that or you're a musician, but whatever you, what, the work that you do is your creation. You know, the message that you have that you want to share with the world, that is your creation. So it's definitely important to just, I mean, it's very powerful actually. It, it sounds very simple, but this is one of the things we we do in the Creative Courage Workshop, which is that, we just examine those many memories we may have of times when people told us, you know, maybe it was a teacher who said, who gave you a bad grade in art class, or maybe it was somebody who said to you, oh, you got to pick a more practical career path, or, you know, just little things like that. And you reframe them uh, to look at them from the perspective that you have now, you know, as an adult, and, and to actually be able to see, well, was that comment true? You know, was was there something wrong with my creative abilities? No, you were just creating in the way you felt inspired to do. And then somebody told you, you know, that's not okay, that's not good enough. And someone slapped a label on it, basically. So yeah, I think it's really important that we all reconnect with that, because that creativity is our point of power. It's our point of self-expression. And life is all about becoming empowered and being self-expressed. And um, and business gets to be a heck of a lot more fun when you're just being wildly creative with things. Like the things that I put out there now, sometimes I'm just like, can I really do this? Like there's still that voice in the back of my head too because, you know, I just created a whole mastermind around around magic, you know, this is what my mastermind group is about. Like, yes, it's for business owners, for, for spiritual entrepreneurs, but it's about magic. So um, it's really cool when you you kind of get to this point where you can look back and look at what you've just put out there and be like, oh, wow, I have reconnected with this and I'm, I'm letting this powerful current of creativity just come through me. And you're basically, you become the vessel. It's not even, like, it comes from up there, to be honest. Like, I think we can all relate to the idea of when you get some flash of inspiration, like, you don't really know where it came from. But the fact is that that flash of inspiration was meant for you because you are meant to bring that idea into the world and the world benefits from your creativity. You know, one of the things I've, thank you for that answer. One of the things that I um, I have found, at least, that to get that creative inspiration it's not just about sitting still and just connecting with your divine energy. It's also about putting yourself out there in an environment, you know, going to certain places. Like I like going to the beach or learning yeah. from these gurus and guides that um, you could model success from whatever body, mind, soul success, whatever you want to interpret success as. How do you, what are you, how do you get this creative inspiration and what do you got how do you tell others to uh, to find uh, these these creative thoughts not i'm not telling you to say okay if you do this you're going to get this creative thought but there's certain things that if you do you're more likely to get those creative thoughts than just sitting still not doing anything am i correct oh yeah definitely definitely um, well, I think you hit the nail on the head with one of them, which is movement, movement. to be honest. Like, I will get my most um, inspired ideas usually when I'm just out for a walk, like, especially in, the, I mean, it's not sunny here now. I live in Montreal and I'm looking at the snow outside. But in the, um, in the summer and in the fall, I love to go for a morning walk, ideally by a body of water. Water for me really helps. I think there's something about the, the flowing energy or something that activates the flow of creativity. So if you live near a body of water and the weather is nice enough for you to go out and take walks, um, I would absolutely say that just plain old walking is a great idea. And bring a, um, 
bring something to record your thoughts with too. Like I, I'm always using my voice recorder app on my on my phone, and and ideas will definitely come to me when I'm walking. Um, something else that also sounds very simple but is very effective is if you're feeling blocked creatively or if you're just kind of hoping to pull down some idea from the sky, some creative idea, just focus on feeling good. Honestly, it's all about managing your vibration and your frequency, same thing. And you want to put yourself in a high vibration, which happens when you are happy. So literally, your your biggest job in being an empowered creator on the planet is to make sure that you are feeling as good as possible at all times. So whatever it is that is fun for you, whatever brings you joy, whatever makes you laugh, go out and do that, and you'll find that just putting yourself in that state of mind is what's going to open up that channel again, because it's... It, we live in this vibrational universe, and if your rate of vibration is high enough, that then allows you to be elevated to the point where your connection with your intuition and your spirit posse is wide open. So it really is about getting up to that level of vibration or frequency. The portal opens between you and you know spiritual inspiration, and then it's able to come down. So. Yeah, it's really just all about feeling good, to be honest. <laughs> I love that. What is um, what is um, your, or I should say, who are some of your influences? What is some books or quotes or wisdom that have inspired you to stick to what you're doing? Hmm. Good question. Let's see. I love. I love, um, I don't know, I want to say Albert Einstein, okay. even though he's not around anymore. I love his, like his, his quote you guys may have heard before. This is one of the ones that I feel very much defines my approach to life and an approach to life that I think we can all benefit from, which is um, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. And I love that because it's, it's so true. It's, it's, you know, two sides of the same coin. I subscribe to the belief that the universe is a completely magical place. And I think that if you don't believe the universe is a magical place, it's because you haven't learned to work with the unseen world. And once you start doing that, life becomes a lot easier, a lot more joyful, and you're actually able to create, you know, whatever it is that you want to create for yourself in the form of abundance or, you know, anything else. So Albert Einstein is one of those, I just feel like he's a real kindred spirit for some reason. I like him. And um, I love Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you've ever talked about um, them on the show, but they are actually a collective channeled entity, channeled by a woman yeah. named Esther Hicks, and they have incredible wisdom to share. So that, they're another one of my... Uh, yeah, one of my uh, top ten in the spirit world, shall we say. Okay, okay, very cool. Well, my final question to you, Amanda, is what is your big goals for 2015 and beyond? Like, what is on your dream board, or what are you walking towards since you're a walking dream board? <laughs> yeah, well, my big goal for 2015 is I am honestly on this campaign to – take the unseen to the mainstream is the way I've come up with describing it. That is my goal. I just want to spread the message of connection with the unseen world as being an incredible tool for, for empowerment, for peace, for love, for healing, uh, basically for, as a force of incredible good in the world. So what that's going to look like for me is a lot of writing, a lot of speaking, um, a lot of continuing to deepen into the magic, you know, with the with the women who are in my mastermind group, and I do one on one work as well, and just a lot of that more exploration on my part because I just never get tired of learning about the unseen world, and there's always always more to learn. So I'm planning on doing a lot of different trainings and retreats and seminars, and just going out there and being this scout for magic, and then bringing bringing that information and um, that wisdom back so that I can share it with others. That's my plan for 2015. That's awesome. Well, you know what, Amanda, there's so much that I'm absorbing from this call, your energy, your presence, and your, just your, 
just the way you look at life, it's so needed for this world. And I really hope that more entrepreneurs and more dream makers uh, connect with you or your products because um, you're you're on you're doing the right stuff. It's awesome what you're doing, and I'm learning a lot. I'm writing all these notes right now. It's it's really cool. Thank you so much for what you're doing and making a contribution to the world. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Oh, thank you so much, Ash. It was great to be here. All right, bye bye. Bye for now.